Today, we're going to take a closer look at specs that have the highest chance to crush the meta in Season 3, but with a slight twist. We're not going to talk about Augmentation Evoker. Look, everyone knows Augmentation is in a tier of its own, and no matter how many times it gets nerfed, it manages to stay alive like a roach in a classic hardcore dungeon. And one more thing, the specs we will cover today are expected to be the best this season, but please don't use this information to gatekeep weekly keys. Instead, we're going to simply provide some suggestions for players who are wanting to be on the cutting edge and push their rating to new heights. Speaking of which, if you are the type of player who wants to rank up fast this season, we're proud to announce that we've been developing brand new Mythic Plus guides for Season 3, which can only be found at SkillCap.com. For over a decade, we've been teaching competitive WoW to an audience of over half a million lifetime users, helping players just like you achieve their goals and make real progress. We do this by choosing to work with the best players from guilds like Echo and Method, who help us produce class courses with tips and tricks that the cutting edge players use to push the highest keys. In fact, we're so confident our service works that we even offer a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that by using our courses, you will gain at least 500 Mythic Plus rating. We currently have guides available for the classes you see on screen, and in the following weeks, we'll be adding more. So even if your spec isn't available now, be sure to check back later and join our Discord where you can join a growing community of passionate players, enjoying premium perks like our Ask a Pro Forum, and even a new giveaway channel where you can win some sweet loot. Check the links below to get started on your journey today with an exclusive discount offer. And with that out of the way, let's take a look at the two tanks we expect to be good investments in Season 3. First up is Vengeance Demon Hunter, which was lucky enough to get a major rework in 10.2. Even prior to the rework, Vengeance was considered to be one of the best tanks when it came to mob control, boasting multiple AoE stops through Chaos Nova and Sigil of Silence, while being one of the few tanks with a pseudo-ranged interrupt. This season, Vengeance Control will be even better thanks to a newly added talent, Illuminated Sigils, offering an additional silence, which definitely comes in handy for some of this season's dungeons, where AoE stops will be in high demand. This patch also helped increase the durability of Demon Hunter through a few key defensive buffs, while also giving them multiple damage increases to core spells like Sigil of Flame, Fell Devastation, and Fracture. Again, Vengeance was already doing pretty good on the damage side, so these buffs only further increase its value. If all this wasn't enough, Demon Hunters are a good addition to most groups because of Chaos Brand. These days, most melee actually deal magic damage, so having an extra 5% modifier to buff most damage sources in your group is always strong even for healers like Disc Priests who can contribute a lot to the scoreboard. As we will discuss in a minute, the strength of Havoc might seem like bad news for Vengeance, but this is one case where class stacking isn't the end of the world. Remember that Demon Hunters are a mountain of AoE stops, and adding more to your group is always beneficial. Speaking of being a mountain of stops, we're also suggesting Prot Paladin as our second tank to main this season. After a meteoric rise in Season 1, Prot Paladin lost a bit of popularity Season 2, thanks to reasons we will not discuss anymore on this channel. But this season looks to be a turnaround for the tanks of the Holy Light. If you watched our recent tier list, competition is stacked for the tanking position this season. Well, with one exception. Anyway, despite Prot Pallies getting next to zero changes in the patch, we still think they're worth maining this season. For one, Holy Paladin stocks have plummeted, which means the Devotion Aura slot is up for grabs. While this buff might seem weak on paper, it's one of the strongest raid buffs in the game. But beyond a silly little buff, Prot Paladins offer enormous control over runs and are truly a jack of all trades, with fantastic mob control and uncontested utility, including multiple externals, off healing, and even a battle res. Even though it's typically not optimal for your tank to be the one with the combat res, something is better than nothing. While Prot Paladin damage isn't typically high compared to other tanks, this season's set bonuses help provide some coverage, with significant damage multipliers baked into Consecration. On movement intensive fights, this could be hard to benefit from, but for most pulls, the increased damage is a welcome new addition. The only dent in Prot Paladin armor is their relative defensive weakness compared to other tanks. Now, for most players running most keys, this shouldn't be an issue, but we would definitely see Prot Paladin hitting a wall in the highest key levels. With our two tanks covered, let's move on to melee, where there is definitely one clear standout. But first, let's dive deeper into Outlaw Rogue. Just like Demon Hunter, the entire Rogue class got reworked in 10.2, increasing their stocks across the entire game. While both Sub and even Assassination both seem really good this season, Outlaw is looking like a clear winner. The rework included a new set of synergistic talents. Despite the jarring name, Upper Handed Upper Hand might be one of the most broken talents ever introduced to WoW. 
It allows rogues to essentially freeze their buff timers, causing adrenaline rush, blade flurry, and slice and dice to not lose duration while in stealth or shadow dance, essentially giving outlaw rogues a near permanent cooldown window. This talent goes hand in hand with crack shot, which allows the rogue to spam between the eyes during stealth or shadow dance. And since buffs are frozen during this time, outlaw rogues get a ton of momentum with these two talents alone. Overall, the outlaw rogue damage profile is a complete package, with good single target and AoE combined with multiple stops and a well-rounded defensive kit that enables them to be super tanky. For similar reasons, Havoc will also be a great pick this season. As another spec that's coming off a major rework, the start of the season is looking hot for DH. Just like Vengeance received two charges of Sigil spells, Havoc got a new capstone talent offering two charges of Immolation Aura, which is a key ability in their damage toolkit. As we know, however, being a damage bot doesn't necessarily translate into being a god tier spec, but fortunately the patch also included some key buffs to Demon Hunter defensives and utility. Nether Walk is now more accessible on the Havoc tree, giving DH another defensive to work with. On the utility side, Fell Eruption is now baseline for Havoc Demon Hunters, which adds to the wall of stops we discussed earlier with Vengeance. With a single target and AoE stun being combined with a pseudo ranged interrupt, Havoc will be a key player in this season's dungeon rotation, where having multiple stops is a massive strength. With our two best melee covered, let's dig deeper into the two ranged DPS looking to be high value this season. First up is Balanced Druid, which has been consistently strong for the majority of the expansion. The Druid class as a whole offers a ton of utility for Mythic Plus, including what might be the best overall raid buff, a combat res, and some highly unique control options. Complementing its utility kit, Balanced Druids also have incredible damage in Mythic Plus, where they can excel in both single target and especially AoE damage. And speaking of damage, Boomkin's got some minor reworks to their tree, including a redesign to Wild Mushroom, which will make Waning Twilight more reliable and not RNG dependent. This change was joined with a rework to Rattle the Stars, which will make the spec a bit more forgiving to play on the damage side. So overall, Boomkin damage is looking quite strong, and the spec itself has even been simplified. Really, the only downside with Boomkins as a whole is their defensive toolkit, which leaves a lot to be desired. Some defensive gaps can be filled with bear form, which isn't always the most exciting button to press, but gets the job done when needed. But if you want a class with plenty of defensive options, look no further than Mage. Despite not receiving many changes, all three specs are looking promising this season, but Fire and Frost are pulling ahead as the comfort pick in Mythic Plus. Mage might have the most diverse array of defensive cooldowns in the game. When played well, mages simply don't die, which is one reason why the spec has continued to push the highest keys in Dragonflight. On top of this, the entire mage class offers a lot of utility in dungeons, including an AoE shield, bloodlust, and an incredibly strong raid buff, which even increases the effectiveness of Ebon Might from Augmentation Evokers. And as we've mentioned repeatedly throughout this video, CC will be in high demand this season, which is another area where Mage excels, with Dragon's Breath and one of the most efficient ranged kicks. You can't really go wrong picking Fire or Frost, and even Arcane is looking strong this season. While it doesn't have the best cooldown cadence for Mythic Dungeons, it is still a powerhouse of CDs, and altogether, Mages are a fantastic option for anyone looking to push. With every DPS covered, let's wrap things up with healers who are definitely more than just an accessory. Just like tanks, the entire healing cast is loaded with good options. While Disc Priest, Preservation of Ochre, Resto Druid, and Mistweaver Monk are all great choices, we're narrowing down our suggestions to Evoker and Druid. While Disc Priests are coming off a major rework and are definitely looking strong, they still lack a bit of utility and are noticeably squishier compared to other healers. Without a kick and with an AoE stop that doesn't work into some common mob types this season, Disc can be a bit awkward into some comps, but overall is still going to be a fantastic choice. Mistweaver is in a similar boat, strong but a bit too niche to recommend as a solo main. While Monks boasts some amazing damage and unique utility, it's a tough sell to call Mistweaver one of the best specs to main. That's why Resto Druid is one of our picks. The spec was already on schedule for being one of the best healers this season, and with recent hotfixes offering massive damage buffs to cat form, Resto stocks have gone through the roof. As we discussed with Boomkin, Druids are a valuable asset in Mythic Plus, boasting a ton of unique utility and one of the most efficient AoE stops. And despite being one of the few healers without a baseline kick, it might be possible to budget Skull Bash into builds with the new cat form damage debuffs. When it comes to actually healing, Resto saw a pretty significant shift this patch, with nerfs to flourish being offset by buffs to overall healing. On paper, this could be a step in the right direction, as previously, messing up your ramp was a huge problem. And speaking of problems, while spot healing has historically been a weak point for Resto, the Season 3 tier set offers some coverage. Overall though, Resto Druids are looking quite strong. Coming off some recent damage buffs, they are a solid addition to most groups looking for a jack-of-all-trades healer. And finally, rounding out our suggestions to main is Preservation of Ochre. The Dragon Healers boast the highest DPS out of any healer, with great AoE damage through Deep Breath and Fire Breath. 
This comes with the standard Evoker toolkit of arranged kick, bloodlust, and multiple knock effects, which combined give Evoker enormous control over the pace of dungeons. Now, some of you out there might be worried about class stacking, with the continued strength and popularity of augmentation seeming like a possible issue for preservation, but just like the case of Vengeance and Havoc Demon Hunter, redundancy is a good thing, as Evokers are also a mountain of AoE stops, so having an additional lizard in your group isn't really an issue, since it means double the stops and even double the utility from Cauterizing Flame and Zephyr, two tools that will have amazing value this season. And with that, we have our suggested specs to main this season. Once again, we didn't cover augmentation for obvious reasons. Instead, our list is a good starting place for anyone looking to get into Mythic Plus as a solo player, wanting the best chance to get into groups and push the highest keys. But we want to hear from you. What specs do you think are the best to main in Season 3? Let us know in the comments below. And if you want some help along the way, be sure to visit skillcap.com using the link below. We've been working with cutting edge players from Echo and Method to make some amazing courses available on our brand new Mythic Plus site. Here, you can learn the hidden secrets of your class as you discover tricks used by top players that allow you to maximize your DPS, healing, and survivability, while also learning some cool tips on how to use your utility, just like MDI and TGB caliber players. Right now, we are building courses for everyone, so if your class isn't represented today, be sure to check back later, where we plan to have most specs fully ready by the holidays. We're so confident our website works that we even offer a rating gain guarantee if you don't add at least 500 points to your IO score while using our guides. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.